Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back to finish up this particular Watch What I Make With These Scraps series. This is um, episode number three, I do believe. Playlist link is down below if you want to go get caught up. So far, out of these scraps that were left over from a quilt top that I made, I made this awesome tote bag that I'm sure we all equally love. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> What's making a noise? I guess it's my iron. And this is what I have left. And so I need to uh, make something with all this loveliness. I still have these strip sets. That's right, I made a bunch of those. And I have some big pieces and I have all these lovely little sticks that I wish weren't all mixed up like this. And I still have strips like this that have a square at the end have a bunch of those I do believe and um, let me sort this out and oh I even have these these are the trimmings from when I made this guy so all of this has to get used I guess including the muslin scraps what's this from oh the lining of the of the tote all right here we go Here's my little sticks, some scraps. Let's put this scrap in there. These are the scrappiest of scraps. And then this is all like some leftover selvages or folds and a couple of scraps from trimming. I've got this, these pieces, these are all pre-cut little squares. I've got two strips without a square attached. I've got these. This strip under here has a flaw in it somewhere so I have to remember that and then I've got the you know the strip sets that I made at this moment I still have no clue what I want to make I'm thinking you know maybe a pet bed <laughs> I don't know and I also had another idea for some top stitching with the little sticks but I have no zigzag on my machine now, so that puts a damper on the idea that I had. Let me think. Okay, I'm going to just try to put stuff together to make some fabric, and then we'll decide what to do with this. I'm going to start with the center, and then I'm just going to kind of work around, kind of crazy quilt style. And this piece is the piece with the flaw, so I'll be able to trim that. So I'm just going to sew these three pieces together. I now have this little guy. And I have an idea. I'm going to cut a two-inch strip of muslin, and I'll see you at the machine. I actually tried starting this before showing you to see if I would like what I was doing. What I did is I put... Um, one of the little sticks down and I sewed in this direction and then I was going to go like this and go down and then turn and go you know this way I was like I don't want to do all that that's just too much work why is my camera looking weird it's got weird things showing on that screen I just don't understand have I always been seeing those things in the screen and I just didn't know See, I don't look at the screen when I talk to you guys. I look at the camera. It drives me nuts when there's people who talk to the camera, but they're looking at the screen, so they never make eye contact. All right, anyway, I just didn't want to be doing all that. So then I thought, why don't I just do this? I'm going to take the strip this way, and I'm just going to lay down these sticks and just go over them. And I did that to this one, and then that's when I said, okay, I need to start recording. So I'm just going to continue. And I'm not going to really care um, how far apart these are. And I do have more green than red. Oh my god, there's so many of these. Oh, I kind of like this, this way of doing it. I have quite a few uh, muslin scraps, so I guess I can just do this. And then what I'm going to do is, uh, when I get to the end... I'm going to turn it and I'll go back up again this way 
And instead of going up and down each one, I might just go this way. There'll be some raw edge. That's fine. I wonder, maybe I should do three green and then a red. I have other scraps. If I need to cut more sticks, I can. And I'm good with them going wonky. You know I love that. Now I happen to be opening, oh, I have an extra red in there, that's okay. I happen to be opening these. Um, usually I use the sticks folded, but I don't know, I'm just opening them. You can use yours any way you want. Now I'm just going to go up the other side. Now I'm going to just go down the center. Maybe I'll make two lines. That was super easy. This is quick. This is the quickest way that I can think of doing this instead of going this way back and forth. Maybe I'll do multiple lines. We'll see. I think I'm on to something here. I just kind of went the width of my foot, so like a quarter of an inch apart. And I'm just going to keep doing that. I like it very much. I like it. And I don't care that there's some raw edges there. You know, even when that's washed, I I bet that's not going to do very much of anything because there's so many lines going this way. Well, that certainly was much quicker, and maybe it's giving you guys an idea of how to use your little sticks, especially the short ones. Not that you create sticks, but if you get them from me, it might give you some ideas. As a matter of fact, I have a, an eBay auction coming out probably about the same time as this video, and it is, I believe, 310 two-inch salvages, 310 sticks, and 155 folds, all novelty prints, 38 different prints, the most colorful scraps you'll ever get your grubby hands on. So you can go check that out. I'll link to it down below. All right, I'm going to make a couple more strips like this. I'm going to do it until this is all used up. Just want to show you that I'm getting the hang of this. I am so into this. This is awesome. When I sew, I do the, you know, the two edges first. I was having trouble getting my foot caught under. So what I do is when I'm coming up to the next strip, I just hold on both ends and just kind of flatten it, you know, like pull. And it goes right over it. This is so awesome. I have four strips made and I like them so much. This was actually much quicker than I thought it would be. Even though I went up and down, I have one, two, three, four, five, six lines of sewing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on that one. All right, I skipped a line there. I think I have seven on all of them except for one. You would never know. And it just really went quick. I'm going to stop for now. I have to do some other stuff, but I'll be back as soon as I can. Same shirt, different day. Deal with it. <laughs> I am going to work on this again. And right now, like I said, my focus is just on making a piece of fabric. I might just sell it as that. Here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to work around, and I'm going to use these lovely um, top-stitched strips of uh, muslin that I made. So let's see, I'll just start this way. I'm going to sew one on. I'll come back and I'll trim. I'm actually going to use this strip because it's going to work a little bit better where I'll be trimming on the muslin. Just finger pressing at this point and I'm going to trim. Do I have anything? I didn't. 
like is I put my stuff away at night. And let's just trim like this. That little bit. And just following the edge of my block. Now I have enough. I'm going to go in this direction. That's going to end on muslin. So that's good. Just finger pressed. This isn't long enough, so we have created yet another scrap. I'll use that. I'll trim on both ends. And that piece is long enough for me to finish this off. You guys, check this out. I have some of those strips that have a square attached. And I said, shoot, you know, it's too long for this. And then I was like, if I do this, though, it's hanging over. I'd have to cut that. What am I going to do with that? And then I thought of this. Let's see if this makes actual sense. Let's start down here. <laughs> I'm going to sew this guy on first. Then this one will create the cornerstone. Oh, my God. This one will create the cornerstone. And then this one just needs to have a red attached to it. Can you see what I'm talking about? And then it will go there. <gasps> huh? It was almost a perfect idea. I just can't even believe how that worked out because that wasn't planned at all. And I got to use that strip that I had left over that didn't have a red. But here is the deal. I went and sewed the red uh, so that this one had two reds, but I need to take one apart and adjust because, see, I wasn't taking into consideration the seam allowances. So it's off by about a half an inch. And one of my cornerstones, I could have tried to make the intersections match, but it didn't. So I'm just going to pick one of these out and trim my green strip a little bit, still allowing for a seam allowance and uh, sewing it back together. I made that one minor adjustment and we're good to go. This is awesome. I want to, ooh, I still have two whole strips and a piece. I could make more if I had to. I'd like to go around again, but I could cut this in half lengthwise. I mean, I certainly don't have enough to go all the way around. No, I would not. I'm just looking at what I would have to piece. I don't really feel like making more. Oh my God, I have these two. When will this end? <laughs> and I still have some more of these strips. I still have a lot of squares. I've got a lot. I've got a lot to use. I've got these two big pieces. All right. I think I'm going to, I don't know. I'm going to think. I have about 115 inches, including one that's kind of crooked. So I think I'll hang on to these until this is a little bit bigger and then it can go around the bigger thing. I'm going to be brave because I could spend so much time trying to figure this out, but I really don't have the time to spend and I don't want to dwell on it. I'm going to cut my two remaining strips in half lengthwise, so they'll each be about an inch wide. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to go all the way around. And to do that, I just folded it and cut lengthwise. So now we have, look, little mini, little mini stick strips. Okay, just going to add that to that block. You guys, I have an idea. Oh my God. I'm going to take one of these squares and cut it in four, and that's going to give me four little one inch cornerstones that I can attach to the strip. And it's going to make a little square diagonal to this one. So I'm doing this just like I did the other strips. I am, let me back you up a little bit. I will raised you up. I sewed one piece with no cornerstones. Now I have this little tiny cornerstone on this piece and I'm going to sew it here. And I will do the same on this other side. I did what I said. I sewed two strips with a cornerstone on each side and then I attached 
a cornerstone to each side of my strip, making sure it was going to line up, and I did that. I actually showed you that, but I did that trick where I thought I was recording, and I wasn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is what you get. And I have an idea. I have a way that I can feel good about not using every single scrap, because that's torturous. It's like, it's hard to figure all this out and what to do. I'm going to use up as much big stuff that I can, and then when I'm done, I'm done. Anything that's left that isn't enough for something else, well, it might be enough, but I, you know, I have to put an end to it at some point. I am going to start a special box or a bag uh, just for crumb pieces that I will make with the leftovers that you see me use in these videos that you see me use for a quilt top and then or whatever project and then for these scrap videos so I will make crumb blocks and those will end up on eBay at some point for the very tiny things the shredded things threads everything I'm also going to start a bag for those and the next time I make something that requires some kind of stuffing like a pillow or a pet bed or whatever they're going to go in there so nothing will get wasted I still have some big stuff though and I have this that I'm going to try to use and this that I'm going to try to use I still have some squares and some salvages and folds if I need to increase anything I don't have um, enough this width to go around but I can cut these two in half and then that should give me enough to go around and look these were four inch strips apparently and when I cut them in half they're two inches so I'm going to go ahead and continue with this cornerstone theme just like I did before these strips with a cornerstone on each corner it's getting bigger and bigger and it's so pretty this is like my favorite thing I've ever done the creative process of just sitting here and trying to figure this stuff out. I just love this so much. So I really think this is a way that I'm going to use the scraps moving forward is just creating new fabric. I mean, I just love this so much. I hope whoever gets it finds a good use for it. You can back it with, you know, any fabric, make a pillow. You can make a big tote bag at this point and it's about to get bigger. You could make a pet bed. You know, you can watch one of my other videos to see how to do that. All right, we have to finish up because I want to take pictures before it's nighttime. I'm not going to worry too much about the stuff that I have there, the scraps that I have. I would like to continue with the um, cornerstones. It's too bad that I didn't do that here. Didn't think of it at that point, but I, I'm okay with that. We got to use up this shit. <laughs> all these, probably not all of them. I mean, I might have enough to go around twice, I don't know, but I would need something in between, and I don't want to put just plain muslin, and I don't have enough. You know, I have just this, and this, and this, so I, you know, I certainly don't have enough to go around. I have to make the decision to end now, because I love this so much that... I don't want to screw it up by adding this around and I would still have some leftovers and I don't want to do two rows around without something to separate I don't have any more of these strips of muslin so I'm leaving it this it can all be part of starting my little crumb blocks or you know maybe I can come up with something else but I'm calling this series done final episode you will see me use all of this maybe not in a video but at least in penny auctions I will turn these into something and uh, use up every bit of it I promise I did make this, which I absolutely love, and I also made this, don't forget this guy, this nice little tote bag, which I love also. These are going to be on uh, eBay, starting at a penny, free shipping for USA, outside of the USA, uh, you have to pay shipping, but you also have to be part of the global shipping program that eBay has, and if you get a pop-up that says 
does not ship to this area, and for some reason, Canada is not included in the area. I don't understand that. If you get a pop-up like that, please don't bid, because it's not going to let you pay at the end. <laughs> I've learned this the hard way. But go check out the... Um, the auctions and uh, you know hopefully somebody can put this to good use I just think it would make an awesome pet bed I really do or a really cool decorative pillow and whatever um, thank you so much for watching I promise you this is all going to get put to good use I really am so anxious to make some crumb blocks out of those and like I said I don't know these might be good starters to crumb blocks I probably have enough to make quite a few crumb blocks using just this stuff. Um, but, you know, in the future, if I don't, it's just going to go into a special box. And, you know, all the little leftovers will be turned into crumb blocks. That I love to do, so that'll be good. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll be back with more soon. You have to subscribe. You do, because listen... This stuff that I was doing here, this top stitching, I have so many ideas for this. You don't want to miss what's coming up. So you have to subscribe. Bye!